I would say the top misconception about regenerative medicine is that we are still using embryos or fetal tissue. I mean, it's uh, very amazing that that is even discussed because we are so far beyond that. I mean, we are probably a couple decades beyond that. Um, we are using, when we're using autologous tissue, we're using the patient's own cells. And uh, one of the most popular ways of doing that is using fat derived or lipoaspirate, uh, where you're able to get the stem cells from the fat. And most people are more than happy to give up their fat. So it's almost like an expendable resource that really they don't want to renew. Uh, so patients are very happy. They get a, a small little liposuction out of it, if nothing else. Uh, bone marrow is also another way to harvest uh, stem cells. Those are the two most common ways of harvesting stem cells from the patient's body. Non-autologous stem cells exist as well. And again, those are not coming from embryos or fetal tissue. And that is absolutely the biggest misconception. Those are coming from placental tissue. So umbilical cord or amniotic membrane. That's a third party product. It's almost, I call it the Switzerland of uh, regenerative medicine. Because those tissues, uh, those products that we get from those tissues, the growth factors, the stem cells that we can get from, from, from those tissues, are immunoprivileged, which means that they don't belong to the mother and they don't belong to the baby, which is why we can use those products for a variety of different patients without having the immunologic response that you would normally see if you had taken cells from just another person. The future of regenerative medicine is, um, I would say, uh, we could look at it as the sky's the limit. Uh, so if we look at regenerative medicine from a linear standpoint, and we try to pinpoint where we are on this spectrum from absolutely nothing, or the beginning of regenerative medicine, to the end, which, what is the end? Well, the end would be complete disease reversal for all diseases. Um, you know, we're very much in the beginning still. Now, I think that, you know, what we're going to find as we start uh, having the ability to really differentiate cells and really start regenerating any and all tissues uh, or, or, you know, products within us, uh, we're going to be running into both legal issues as well as ethical issues. And right now, we can't do that. It's not legal to do that. But let's say that it is legal to, say, manipulate cells or differentiate cells. Uh, when do we get into that ethical debate of how much can we and how much should we regenerate? Should we, if we have that ability, should we um, um, allow people to have all of their function back? Does that mean that they're going to be able to live now for well over 100 years? Um, uh, that sounds great, right? Um, but it does bring up some issues, which um, I think will probably be best handled when and if that time comes. Because there's going to be very specific conversations that uh, are going to be had at that time. And they're going to be specific to whatever technology we have and our ability to apply that technology at that time.